Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen and colleagues. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank IOC as organizers for the invitation to speak. It's a great honor and pleasure to speak at this meeting. Today, the topic of my talk is clinical relevance of ocular circulation and glaucoma. I will try to demonstrate this relationship between ocular circulation and glaucoma using OCT and geography studies. There is no conflict of interest to be disclosed for the presentation that I am about to make. Glaucoma is defined as progressive optic neuropathy, which is characterized by retinal ganglion cell death and loss of their axons. Therefore, main target tissues of glaucomatous damage consist of three parts, retinal ganglion cells, retinal nerve fiber layer, and optic nerve head. Studying blood flow at these target tissues has many clinical relevance. These include, first, blood flow can be used as a surrogate parameter for glaucomatous damage. Second, studying blood flow at these target tissues can help us to study the pathophysiology of glaucomatous damage. And lastly, blood flow deficiency can play a role as a biomarker for disease monitoring in a given patient. So in the remaining uh, presentation, I will try to convince you of what I just mentioned with the various existing studies. Now let's briefly review the blood supply to the three glaucomatous target tissues. More than 30% of retinal ganglion cells reside about 8 degree radius area of macula. For viola is the most central area, about 400 micron in diameter, and has no retinal ganglion cells. The blood supply to the retinal ganglion cells in the macula is from superficial retinal capillary bed, which originate from central retinal artery. Next, retinal nerve fiber layer structure becomes thicker closer to the disc margin. They are absent within fovea. They are supplied by specially characterized capillaries called radial peripapillary capillaries, which originate from central retinal artery. Radial papillary capillaries run parallel to retinal nerve fiber layer, and their density has significant correlation with retinal nerve fiber layer thickness. Optic nerve is mainly supplied by short posterior ciliary arteries. As shown in the slide, the prelaminar part is supplied by peripapillary choroid. Laminar cribrosa part is by the circle of zinc and holler formed by paraoptic posterior ciliary artery, and retrolaminar region is by PL branches from posterior ciliary artery. Therefore, the main source of blood supply is short posterior ciliary artery, and the direction of blood supply is towards the optic nerve, that is, centripetal direction. Recently, OCT and geography allows non-invasive visualization of both vascular abnormalities and perfused vasculature of the retina optic nerve head, and deep layer optic nerve head tissues, such as choroid, without the use of contrast dye. For example, with split-spectrum amplitude decorrelation, so-called SAD angiography method, OCT angiography detects motion of scattering particles, such as red blood cells, within sequential OCT B-scans performed repeatedly at the same location of the retina, optic nerve head, or other relevant locations of different layers in the eye. As shown in this slide, OCT and geography can therefore provide non-invasive perfusion images of various glaucoma target structures in the eye. For example, radial peripapillary capillary network and superficial vascular plexus for the circulation of retinal nerve fiber layer and retinal ganglion cells, and the circulation of optic 
nerve head and parapapillary choroid. Using OCT angiography in this slide, we can appreciate the loss or the dropout of radiopapillary capillary network corresponding to the location of retinal nerve fibrillar damage at the inforotemporal location. This finding indicates that the microvasculature loss at the radiopapillary capillary level in glaucoma occurs secondary to or as a consequence of retinal nerve fibrillar atrophy. Therefore, radiopapillary capillary loss can be used as a surrogate parameter for glaucomatous damage. In fact, radiopapillary capillary vessel density loss around the optic disc has a similar glaucoma diagnostic capability to retinal nerve fibrillar thickness measurements for differentiating between healthy and glaucoma size according to the area under the ROC curve as shown in this slide. Retinal ganglion cells are most abundant in the macula. Therefore, macular vessel density, particularly superficial vascular plexus in the macula, provides blood flow to the retinal ganglion cells. This slide shows that macular vessel density loss is significantly greater in the superficial layer than deep layer as indicated by these red outlines. Therefore, superficial macular vessel density parameters have greater glaucoma diagnostic capabilities and better correlation with visual field damage compared with deep macular vessel density parameters. This study again confirms that optical coherence tomography and geography parameter can be used as a surrogate parameter to detect glaucoma change and correlate well with the visual field damage in glaucoma. One of the controversies in glaucoma pathogenesis is regarding whether circulation impairment in glaucoma is the cause or effect. In order to answer this question, prospective longitudinal study is required to answer the temporal relationship between circulation impairment and glaucoma damage. As one example of prospective longitudinal study design, measurements of macula and optic nerve head microvasculature at baseline using OCT angiography and examining the impact of these baseline parameters on subsequent glaucoma progression can be useful in terms of studying the temporal relationship. In this recent study shown in this slide, Lower baseline macula and optic nerve head vessel density are significantly associated with a faster rate of retinal nerve fiber layer loss in mild to moderate stage glaucoma eyes, suggesting that baseline optic nerve head or macular circulation impairment can lead to subsequent disease progression in glaucoma. This study illustrates that OCT and geography can be clinically relevant in terms of studying the role of ocular circulation in the pathophysiology of glaucoma. By imaging the deep layer optic nerve head using OCT and geography, we can detect the choroidal microvasculature dropout as shown by these red circles in this slide. Glaucoma eyes with choroidal microvasculature dropout are at a greater risk of experiencing future central visual field deterioration compared to those eyes without choroidal microvasculature dropout as shown in the serial visual field tests. This finding suggests that choroidal microvasculature dropout may have a role as a negative prognostic biomarker for future central visual field progression. So in summary, studying ocular circulation is clinically relevant in glaucoma for the following reasons. 
Our close circulation can be objectively studied using OCT and geography technology by imaging the profusion of various glaucoma target tissues, including optic nerve head, retinal nerve fiber layer, and retinal ganglion cell tissue. So far, OCT and geography studies have demonstrated that measuring the ocular blood flow is clinically useful as a surrogate parameter for glaucoma's damage, for studying the pathophysiology of glaucoma, and as a biomarker for glaucoma damage and disease monitoring. Thank you very much uh, for your attention, and once again, I really appreciate the IOCS organizers for the opportunity to speak today.